I'd like to welcome everyone to our feature panel. Our panel is entitled From Student to Young Professional. And my name is Eric Lenane. I'm the Associate Director for Advising here at the School of Management. I have a bit of a cold, so you'll have to bear with me. I promise I won't start coughing. Um, I'm going to be serving as today's panel leader. But with me today are some very interesting young people, as you guys can see. Our, I'm really sure you're going to enjoy getting to know them. Our five panelists include two current um, students, a junior and a senior, as well as three recent alums. Our panelists, Dean French and myself, will be happy to answer any of your questions about our topic today, which really is about the development of our students, how they go from being freshmen and just first coming here and trying to figure out what they're interested in, to getting involved in student organizations and figuring out things like concentrations, getting internships, looking into first jobs and interviews, and then finally moving on out into, I guess you could say, the real world and getting out there and living their lives after university. Um, now, a bit about logistics, please, first. Before we get to the panel, our special guest, um, Dean Jim French of our Feld Career Center, will talk for a few minutes about our Career Center and its services. And after that, our panel will briefly introduce themselves and will open up for about 35 minutes of questions from folks. Um, our Dean's hosts will be walking around with microphones so that you can ask the questions. Um, what will be good about that is they're mic'd, so you will be able to hear you at the right volume. Um, and at about, I would say, probably about five minutes of 11, I'm going to jump in and indicate that we have only about five more minutes of time for conversation. Um, if not all of your questions get answered today, you're going to have plenty of time to ask them again at, at a next panel or even over lunch. Um, one request, so that we can answer as many questions as we can, not all of the um, panelists are going to answer every question. And I also reserve the right to kind of try to move things on. So thank you for your patience with me. So before we, why don't we go ahead and begin? And I'd like you to first uh, welcome Dean French. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> and Eric does move people along. <laughs> first of all, uh, welcome future SMG students. Congratulations. Uh, it's no easy achievement to get into the School of Management. And uh, so, you know, job well done. Um, Mom and Dad, welcome as well. Brothers and sisters, welcome. Um, I'm going to start with a few statistics just so uh, to set the, uh, the table. Then I'll tell you a little bit more about the culture of SMG and how we get people to go to work upon graduation. Uh, as you probably know, in 2012, 93% of our graduates were offered a job within six months of graduation at a starting salary of just under $50,000. So it's a pretty impressive uh, statistic. It's, it's among the top in the country. And this is one of the best business schools in, in the country, uh, no doubt. Uh, employers love our students. Uh, they love our graduates. They love our students. They come on campus to meet our students. And they recruit and they hire our, our students. Um, it is. Uh, you know, 92% of our students have at least one internship. Some have two and three prior to graduation. So those internships, as we all know, build the bridge for the relationship for permanent placement uh, later down field. Um, and just in the last 12 months, 230 different employers came to this building to meet our students. 230 different employers from around the world, some brands that you would all know. Uh, come here to meet our students. And they posted over 1,600 jobs on our CareerLink website. And just yesterday, you know, there was, there's an employer here every day in the Feld Career Center. If you go out the lobby here and turn left, um, we have a large staff of people uh, working with all of our students for internships and job placement. And they love our students, the employers love our students for good reason, you know. You don't get into the School of Management without being very bright. But there's also something else besides just being intelligent, and that is the people who come into the School of Management are high achievers. There's a certain profile of the people who come here. They want to make a difference. They want to get things done. Um, and we have a, a, unique, a, a unique model here that I think differentiates us from other universities and other schools. This is a global school. You will go to class with students from all over the world. And that's a learning in and of itself. In some cases, and I've been able to teach here, I've been blessed to teach here for 13 years, 
In some cases, I have as many as 15 different countries represented in my room. And these are in my classroom. And these are the best and the brightest from around the world in a classroom together. And you can only imagine the cross-learning that occurs when you have that type of dynamic in the classroom. So it's a really, it's a fantastic advantage you have at SMG when you have all these bright people in this facility. We do a great job of teaching students how to work in teams. As we all know, those of us who are adults, and I had a long business career as well, that that is the model. That's how we get things done. There's a good reason why business people put people in teams, because two and three and four and five brains are better than one brain trying to solve a problem. We teach our students from day one, from the moment they enter into these halls, that how to work in teams. And not only teams of people like themselves, but teams of people who are very different from them, from all over the globe. Uh, and the, those relationships that are built and knitted and so forth. We also do a great job of teaching our students to speak, to hold an audience, to make a business pitch, to present a business case. And as we all know, and mom and dad, you know, that the leaders in industry and in politics and in government and in the arts and culture, the leaders are people who can communicate. So we take a lot of pride in developing public speaking, presentation uh, skills for our students. Our students are confident in being able to speak by the time they leave here. So those are some, you know, some of the, the, the added <laughs> aspects of, of being at SMG. This is not a, a vocational business school, if you will. It's not a school where we're just training you to get a good job. And as I've told you before, employers love our students. They come, they hire our students, and they're here every day. Um, but that, we're much more than that. We're, we're here to develop leaders for tomorrow, for leaders for industry and for the world. And that means we teach our students to see the intersection of things, not just, this, not just accomplishing the rigorous you know, curriculum, the business curriculum that they will conquer here, because it is tough, but we look to see the intersections of the arts, business and the arts, a business and technology, a business and sustainability, a business and geopolitical events. Because those are the people who will shape tomorrow. And that's what Boston University School of Management is. It's about shaping for tomorrow. Um, so we're very, we're very proud of that. We have a fantastic facility, as you can see, and those of you who've traveled through the building. And you know, you're at a great university in a great city, but you're also in a relatively small college of about 2,000, 2,200 people here at SMG in total population. And so, you know, this facility is always being upgraded. It's a, it's a great, again, I've taught here for years, and it's a great facility. It's a great learning environment. The tiered classrooms, the well at the beginning, at the front of the classroom, the technology in the classroom. And you have this, you have this diverse group of people of bright, high achievers. And there's an energy and electricity in that classroom based upon uh, the people who come in and the, and the environment that we've created here. <coughs> so it's a fantastic facility. And you know, my students will tell me that when they walk across those marble floors, their game is on. They're up. It's a little bit different. You're coming in here. You know you're with very bright people from around the globe. You know the class is going to be exciting. You know your professors are going to, to be there and be questioning you and wanting you to participate and drawing you out into the conversation. So your game is on when you come into this building. It's, it's really a, an exciting place to be. And I was, asked, I was teaching last week, and I asked my students, I said, what should I tell these incoming students? They said, tell them about that energy, that, that when you come to SMG and you're in this learning environment, that, that you really do, you do step it up and, and you learn from each other. So I wanted to make, make that point. We have a fantastic faculty here. We're accessible. Uh, we, have a lot, we have open doors. We have office hours. Our students become uh, very, you know, very familiar to us and become our friends. And you know, over the years, um, I've traveled the globe and met, met up with former students who are now successful in business. And they, so we, we, are, we are really a smaller environment within a big environment. And lastly, before I turn it back to Eric, I just want to mention that as incoming freshmen, you will have uh, four years of career management courses. Now think about this for a second. Your career is your greatest economic asset. The earning potential of your career is your greatest economic asset. And at SMG, you're going to be taught from, the, from freshman year through graduation 
how to manage that asset. And if you're coming in, you're going to have uh, four different modules your first year about exploring career paths, possible career paths. You're going to, to uh, do a lot of self-reflection of what you want to do, what your strengths are, where your interests are. Um, you're going to begin to be, be able to, to, to answer questions about yourself in a confident way. Uh, there's a process that we use where, where you will actually write out answers, then, then, then express them, then write them again, then codify them and put them on a, a site that's unique to you. It's called a, a, it's a portal site that is an e-portfolio where all your work around career management will be stored in one place. And you'll be able to build upon that over the four years and take it with you. And so your interviewing skills over time and your, your elevator pitch and how to network and how to brand yourself and how to uh, get an internship, how to convert the internship into a job, how to take that permanent job and how to onboard properly so that you're successful once you're in the workforce. And all of that is going to be something that we will, we will teach you because you will have future SMG students, you'll have probably over 20 different positions in your career. And that's a lot of movement and change. And mastering your career management capabilities and having that as a skill is going to be very important because that does affect your economic ability to, to take care of yourself and take, your, take care of your family. So that's a, that's a, it's a wonderful program. We're, we're excited about it. And, and uh, you know, I'll be happy to talk to you more about it. One-on-one uh, -on -one or with uh, answering questions. So, Eric. Great. Thank you, Dean French. Okay, folks, before we open up for questions, I'm going to ask the panelists to briefly introduce themselves and say a little bit about their own paths. And I think we'll start to the left. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Sam Kramer. I graduated last May, so class of 2012. I had a dual degree here in hospitality and management. I concentrated here in the School of Management in operations. Uh, while I was studying, I had an internship in Australia and in London and one in New York, and now I work for Goldman Sachs in Salt Lake City. Hey, everyone. My name is Maxim Skudarnov. I'm a junior here right now, and I'm concentrating in finance accounting and minor in economics. Uh, throughout my three years here, I've had internships with Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, Verizon Communications, and this summer I'll be working with PricewaterhouseCoopers. Good morning, everyone. My name is Emily Berman. I graduated from the School of Management in 2009. I also have a degree from the College of Arts and Sciences in History and a master's from the School of Education. I had internships starting my sophomore year with Teach for America for three years in my undergrad experience. I also worked in a nonprofit education firm when I was abroad in Australia. And I joined Teach for America after graduating and am still teaching in Boston Public Schools. Great. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Adanta Hanu. I also graduated from the School of Management, obviously. Um, in May 2010, um, I focused on international management. And um, throughout my time at BU, I had a variety of different internships. I um, actually interned for the mayor's re-election cam uh, campaign here in Boston. I also worked for a marketing uh, startup company and did some work with public relations. And now I currently work for the Hanover Insurance Group. Um, it's a property and casualty insurance company headquartered outside of Boston. So. How's it going? I'm Sean. Uh, I'm a senior in the School of Management. I'm going to graduate in May. Very exciting. Um, <laughs> I, uh, throughout my you know, career at the School of Management, I interned at Covidian when I was a sophomore. They have their headquarters right in my hometown. Um, and I have interned at PricewaterhouseCoopers when I was a junior. And now I'm going to be working with them full time next year as a tax associate. Great. Well, thank you, panelists and Dean French. And as you folks can see, we have some people with some great experience, all having come to the School of Management or currently in it right now. Like I said, we have a junior and a senior, and we have folks who have graduated most recently or just a few years ago. So at this point, I would love to just open up for any questions people might have. And our Dean's host, I believe, will be walking around with microphones. And if you have a question, if you could please raise your hand, that would be great. First right there. What was it like, um, you know, trying to get a dual degree from the School of Management and the School of Hospitality? So the question was, what was it like to get to try to get a dual degree 
from hospitality or others within the School of Management uh, as your primary and then doing another one as well. And I think we have a couple dual degree folks. I think that one might have been pointed at me. Um, <laughs> I found that uh, management and hospitality went really well together. There's a lot of overlap in your, you know, your intro to accounting courses, your statistics courses, your intro business to law, things like that, um, that really connect and they're very similar. So I found that the dual degree was, it was an easy match and it made a lot of sense um, because I was really interested in the hospitality uh, industry, but I really felt that the business degree was very important, but I found that they went really nicely hand in hand together. And I think you were a dual degree as well, right? Yeah, I can yeah. speak to that. So I have a history degree from CIS, or College of Arts and Sciences, and there's actually no overlap with the School of Management. Um, I was really fortunate to have a lot of AP courses from high school that transferred as college credit. So I actually came in with a lot of credit. And actually talking to Dee Bercobio, I just saw her walk in. She just encouraged me to take advantage of this. And I was always really passionate about history. So while I was overloading with courses and taking a lot of courses, it never really felt daunting because I was studying two things I was extremely passionate about. Great question. Other questions? Anyone? Oh, we'll start from right here in the front. Actually, we'll go over here first. Um, how do you feel about juggling like an internship and classes and trying to maintain a social life and other clubs and activities? Like, how do you feel about, you know, like is your stress level like overwhelming? Like, <laughs> just don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I think any of you guys could probably answer this question. Sure. Yeah. I think uh, I'll go ahead and start. Um, I think one of the really neat things about growing up and going to college is the fact that you're finally learning how to really balance your life. So it's the first time where you're on your own, you don't have someone coming to wake you up in the morning. So understanding how to, again, like you said, do very well in your academics while also trying to balance internship, maybe also having a work study job, maybe also while getting involved at Boston University. And, you know, I mean, that's a lot to put into place. But I think one of the great things here is that you not only have the mentors and the guidance from either certain courses that you're taking, where um, you know there's a career management course that we have at, um, in the school management, so that helps you focus on your career and building a resume and understanding how to write a cover letter and things that, you know, if you just sat at home and waited for that to happen, it's a lot more difficult. But if you have people helping you understand the best way to do it, um, it becomes an easier process. And then same thing with internships. Again, if you're surrounded by a community of people who are also trying to get an internship and understand how meaningful it is to eventually get a job. It's easier to pick yourself up and also you know, go do that rather than sitting around in your dorm. But um, I think when it comes to juggling it, just utilizing your friends, your mentors, your professors, and just asking questions and helping you understand the process, understanding how important it is to write a thank you letter after you have an interview, little things like that that really do make a difference in you getting an opportunity. And that's something that you learn in a lot of the classes and um, coursework that you do here. So. Thank you, Delta. Any other? I think just to add on to that, I think the busier you are, the better off you are. I always found that the busier I was, the better my grades were, the more successful I was in my internships, the more I was able to get done because you don't come home from class and you're like, oh, I only I have four hours to get this one assignment done and then just don't end up doing it. So I think that the, the busier you are, the better you do academically and the better you learn how to time manage and things like that. I think it's true, everybody has to find their balance, what's right for them. And I, I was a very much an organized kind of person who needed also the same kind of thing. A lot of time tied up really worked for me. Others, they might need more time to relax. <laughs> uh, there was another question over here. Yes, ma'am. Boston's a beautiful city. For the graduate students, I'm thinking specifically about living wages. What's the job market like in Boston? The uh, Massachusetts and Boston in particular has been um, probably a little bit better off than the nation as a whole with the economy. Our unemployment rate has been below national average throughout this recession that we're coming out of now. So um, it's, it's been pretty good, not as robust as past years and past times prior to the, you know, the Wall Street crash of a few years ago but it's been fairly good. The housing market here is coming back strong. Um, the, in particular in Boston, the condominium marketplace has come back very strong. 
uh, which has fueled other things obviously behind that in terms of building and construction opportunities and so forth. So we're actually done fairly well and probably among one of the healthier economies in the nation right now. What, what, what companies? Uh, what percentage of the ones? I know it's rough to cover that measure, but what percentage of the Oh, s stay right here in oh. Boston? Boston. Who want to be here? Okay. Mm. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, it probably as is, is, is much as 50% of our students stay right here. Um, it's a fairly large population of people who stay here. Um, it's an attractive city. It's a young city. People don't want to leave. We have excellent relationships with Liberty Mutual, which is headquartered right down the street, with a uh, major component of Bank of America, which is located right down the street, Hill Holiday, which is located in an advertising firm right down the street. So we have some very strong relationships with employers right here that want our students. Um, and so students do stay at least for you know, an initial job, and then they might migrate somewhere else. But it, it, is, it is close to 50%. Question over here. Yeah. Oh, right there. This place. Um, in what ways does a career center like facilitate interactions between students and employers? Like, is there career fairs or anything like that? I can, I can speak to this. I um, I actually got my job through a Feld Career Center event. So I am totally pro Feld Career Center. <laughs> um, they uh, they have courses where you know, the students are required to go to and they tell you about resumes and networking and uh, the professor, which would, you know, not a professor, it's the Feld Career Center representative who would teach this course, they you know, just pushed and said, hey, we're having this event, hey, we're having this event, you should come. And I said, you know, why not? So I went to it, it was a student alumni you know, breakfast kind of thing, and I brought my resume, and you know, I did my research beforehand, and it was just so, you know, it was formal, but it was you know, kind of casual at the same time. Um, and that was just one event, and I did my research beforehand. I saw Price Waterhouse Coopers was gonna be there, and you know, put my resume in her hand, and you know, the rest is history. But that's, that's not uncommon to have happen. We have events all the time. You know, there, I'll be walking to class through the, through the atrium, and everyone's dressed up like this, whereas, you know, I'm in my backpack and jeans just because there's another event for another thing from the Feld Career Center. And I can't thank them enough for having these little events. Um, you know, I just, it was just a great thing, and they make it really easy for you. Can I just add one sure. Quick? Yeah, so one of my internships was actually with the Feld Career Center here. I was one of the career peers. So um, not only did I have to figure out how to do my own resume and cover letter, but I had to also read other students. So not only do you have an academic advisor and basically a professor who is going through the resumes and the cover letters, but you also have a student who you can go to, and there's um, I think five or six of them that are also reviewing resumes. So it's very, very accessible. But also, again, the biggest thing is understanding how to really market yourself, especially in today's world, understanding how important it is, again, to be able to interview. So practicing for interviews. And um, the Feld Career Center will actually bring in employers to have like lunch and learns and information sessions in addition to, in addition to the career fairs. So from all those different um, corporations coming onto campus, all those companies coming onto campus, it's very easy to, again, get an understanding of how to get yourself out there. I also got my job from one of the career fairs. So, um, you know, understanding the elevator pitch and, you know, being comfortable going to someone and saying, hi, you know, I graduated from the school management, this is who I am. That's not easy for everyone and you have to be able to practice that and these courses that we have allow you to do that, so. I see that the same others. Yeah. The, the um, just a couple of weeks ago we had a mock interview night. So we had 30 employers come and we had 160 students go up, dress up. You'll see this, we have our own little traditions here at SMG and when you're presenting, you'll see students wearing suits, and when we have interview uh, uh, career fairs and so forth, stu students wear, wear suits, so we'll always know who's presenting what day or who's doing what. But the other night, when we had 160 students and 30 employers, and they went through these mock interviews, because well, how do you become good at it? It's practice, practice, practice. And um, there's an energy to that. There's an excitement to that. Um, just yesterday, again, 
there was an employer who wanted to see six or seven resumes and six or seven kids that were uh, students and they're in the Feld Career Center. So just about any day of the week that school is in session, there's an employee on campus here meeting with students. Sometimes it's a large event and sometimes it's a smaller event. Um, but it is, you know, there, there is something going on constantly in terms of career management. And that's why the numbers bear out what they do, that the students get hired and get to very good jobs upon graduation. Great, thank you. Another question, anybody on that side? I don't know if we come over there. No, okay, we're gonna come to this gentleman and then right to the middle, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, my question is, has to do with uh, like determining what you're gonna major in. Mm -hmm. And it's actually, what do you recommend to someone who really doesn't know what they would do within the School of Management? That is a great question. <laughs> um, yeah, everybody probably wants to jump on this one. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys think? Max, did you want to start? Yeah, um, I think that was kind of my situation too. I came in and I knew I wanted to do business and economics type of things, but I wasn't really sure exactly uh, where I wanted to take that uh, education. So what I did is I joined as many organizations here in SMG as I could, and one of them was Finance Club, which really um, kind of developed, I guess, my passion for finance. Uh, and there are many other organizations here in SMG as well as in uh, BU overall. There's marketing, accounting, um, various clubs that will kind of tell you, you know, about the job market out there, what kind of jobs you can apply your education to, what you will actually be doing with your education, stuff like that. And then also there's the uh, Feld Career Center, of course, that um, you can go to and meet with professionals there and they will tell you, uh, you know, talk about your interests and try to kind of guide you in the right direction. Great. I'd like to add on to that. Um, so as I mentioned, when I first came into SMG, I wanted to triple concentrate because <laughs> um, I just wanted to learn everything. <laughs> but when I decided to get a dual degree, it kind of narrowed. So originally I was thinking, um, I don't even remember anymore. My gosh, it's so long ago. But ultimately, I decided to pursue general management because that concentration allows you to take any four courses that spark your fancy. So while I was abroad in Australia, I wasn't limited to which courses I could take. I literally took the ones that interested me most, and that's how I chose my concentration. Well, it's also important to note, folks, that um, we do have one major here, in reality. It's Bachelor of Science Business Administration, but we have 10 concentrations, which is great, general management, finance, accounting. And another important thing to note, too, is you don't need to know right off the top what is a student declares their concentration in their junior year, actually March 1st of their junior year. So you have all that opportunity to explore talking to career center folks, peers, organizations, uh, getting to know the faculty so well to understand the industry. We have folks called concentration liaisons who are kind of the hotshot professors that's, that like to talk to students. And I tell them sometimes you have to keep one foot in the door and one out because they'll talk your ear off and walk you all the way to the elevator. <laughs> so um, it's just a great group of faculty that really get to know our students. And through these interactions, you really learn about what you want to do, and maybe even a little bit about what you don't want to do. And I think just based off of that, that almost everybody who comes in thinking that they want to do this ends up leaving not doing that. So um, I don't know anybody who started saying, I'm going to do finance, and actually graduated with finance. You know, you learn as you study and as you learn more about the industry, as you have internships, you know, as they're saying, and you kind of find where you think your path is going to lead you, and most people end up changing their mind by the end of the four years. In, in that uh, freshman uh, career management, course, it gets you into that thinking mode of, 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 of self-reflection, understanding what your strengths are, thinking about where you might want different career paths and possibilities. So it's exploratory early on, and it, it's, an it's an environment about learning and growing. It's not about just coming in with, with, a, with, a, with a mindset and then driving through that. We really want our students to, to be at a great university and to learn um, and look at all options before finally de making a decision about career. Great, I think you had a question in the middle there. Oh, was it somebody? Oh, was it? <laughs> I thought there was that gentleman right there. Okay, sorry. Or that's, okay, right, we'll go right there. So my question, actually you started hitting on it. So my question is I'd like to hear from the students and graduating students as far as your interaction with the faculty. So, you know, if you could describe your interaction, how they assisted you in picking your concentrations, how they assisted you in guiding you, you know, through your career path, and then also just, you know, 
uh, outside classroom assistance. I'll take that one. Um, uh, while you're here as a student, faculty have what we call office hours. Basically, it's a set amount of time that they're required to be in their office during the week so that students can come in and speak with them about your classes, career path, whatever it might be. So they're really accessible. They all have offices upstairs on the fifth and sixth floor. Is that where it is these mm -hmm. days? Um, and so they're all right here in this building. They're very easy to find. All the faculty love it when students come in and talk to them about whether it be coursework or jobs or whatever it might be. I actually had a professor who was my freshman year professor. He became kind of a mentor advisor to me and ended up being really instrumental in my job, my internship, which turned into a job. He was very, you know, I think this is a great career path for you and really helped kind of guide me into the direction that I ended up going. Regarding the um, concentration liaisons, so I, as I've said a hundred times, I knew accounting was you know, something I wanted to do pretty early on. So BU made it really easy for me to find information about accounting, whether it was the accounting club, um, professors that did accounting, and there's a specific one I'd like to mention, Professor Pat Patricia Doherty. Um, she's the liaison for accounting people that are going to do the CPA exam. And with the CPA exam, there's so many requirements, and you need to have this class, and you need to do this thing, that it was just, you know, made my mind explode. So it was good to sit down and speak with her one-on-one. -on -one. Um, she was very flexible to meet with me to say, hey, Sean, here's the courses you need to take. Here's what you should be doing. As well as, I probably get an email from her every day or every other day saying, you know, not just to me, but to all the accounting people that are, you know, on the CPA track saying, here's this review course, here's a scholarship for the CPA exam, here's an event hosted by Becker. Um, you know, they just make it really easy for you and it's, they're just very accessible in things like that via email, in person, phone conversations. The faculty, as we've said, are very accessible. I was going to quickly say, I think one of my favorite things was the professor's office hours. I know many of my professors, especially before an exam, would hold special office hours where we could come in groups, in smaller groups, and basically have a learning session with them. And any type of questions we had, maybe we already reviewed all of our notes, but we still can't figure out this exact concept, they would sit there and explain that to us. Instead of saying, oh, well, wait for the exam tomorrow, they would want to make sure that it's actually about learning and understanding the material. And to me, I remember that was just one of my favorite things. Is the fact that they would actually take the time to do that because a lot of times you think, oh, they're too busy, you know, they don't want to come, you know, they don't want to have you in your office hours, but they would always host their office hours and then always make extra time if students needed that extra time to go in and see them separately. So for me, that's how I became really close to my professors is going to those. I can't sing enough praise about the faculty here. Um, so I'm four years out of college and still anytime I have some extra time, I park right by SMG. <laughs> I walk right upstairs. Well, first I visit the UPO and I say hi to everyone. Um, <laughs> but I walk around and I run into my former professors who still welcome me with open arms and we catch up. They give, they give advice. They maybe suggest I get in touch with somebody else to network. Um, as a bit of advice for future students here, get to know the professors. It's not only advantageous to yourself, but it's also about relationship building and network building. And I found that even outside of office hours, if I emailed a professor and you know, asked for advice or just to meet and talk and see where that led, they were always open to opening their time for me. And I still find that the case. Even last night, I was at an event um, for the School of Management, and I ran into a professor I never even had. And I suggested, oh, can you know, I'm on school vacation because I'm a teacher. Can I meet up with you next week? And she said, yes. And that's just what one of the many things you gain from the faculty here. They are absolutely phenomenal. I cannot say it enough. I agree with that fully. It's a very approachable, personable, and, uh, and, and nice faculty member group. What's good and interesting about our faculty advising, I guess you could say, is that our faculty don't particularly choose courses all the time with students. We have an academic advising office that helps with that. So faculty are free to develop mentoring relationships with students, you know, about industry, understanding about, you know, what they're going to do. They really get to know our students. And actually, when I go into the freshman class, if, uh, if you guys are here, I go into your introductory course and I challenge every one of you to get to know three or four faculty members by the time you graduate so well because they help with getting your resumes uh, and, and you know, help you with you know, searching for student leadership um, type things for your um, letters of recommendation, jobs, 
graduate school. I, I, I do find, just like Emily said, that students stay connected for a long, long time. It's wonderful to see. That was a great question. Other questions? You've been sitting up front here and over in the back. The gentleman right there, we were going to go to you next, I believe. There we go, the guy in the sweatshirt right there. Um, what type of courses can we expect to take as a freshman? How many of those are from the School of Management, and does that number change as we go through um, uh, sophomore, junior, and senior year? Um, basically. Well, I could tell you a little bit. I can jump into that one, because the reason why, as I told these guys, the curriculum, as you guys know, is changing a little bit. So what happens is, is in your freshman year, you're going to wind up taking a course called Business, Society, and Ethics, a four-credit course. You're also going to be taking a course in Finance, um, a two-credit course or an introductory for finance course. You're also going to be taking a course on creating value in the world. You're going to learn about sectors, another two-credit course in that as well. Along with that, you'll be doing some of your other courses, which are traditionally, I guess you could say, a little outside of school of management, but still core fundamental required courses for us, micro and macroeconomics, calculus, writing, things like that. So you're going to, in your first year, be getting a really sound grounding in management, as well as some of the more important skills like understanding trends in economics, writing skills, mathematical, analytical skills, that kind of stuff. I don't know, anybody else like any comments? Well, Ian, you'll, you'll be required to take career management, mm -hmm. uh, the first course level. Can I also just say how important that fre this freshman year at BU is, I think that really defines this business school from other ones. This business, society, and ethics class, you're learning business concepts from day one. Other schools, they'll you know, put you in a lot of liberal arts classes, and you, you'll kind of get a business feel by the time you're a junior. Here, I was learning balance sheets, income statements, throughput times, time value of money, you know, just pretty big business concepts from day one, and that put me and all these other students here at a huge advantage over other schools for internships, and just, I felt more knowledgeable when speaking with professors or anyone. So just that introduction um, to business concepts from day one as a freshman is just amazing. Great question. I want to come over here to this lady first, right there in the red. Um, I think you mentioned about how you got like a double major degree or concentration. I'm not sure. Um, in a <laughs> <laughs> in um, a different school than this school. Um, so do, do you have to like be accepted twice, or can you just transfer and do multiple things from different schools, or how does that work? Um, great question. So when I was a sophomore, I had to apply to the additional school, and I. Is that still the same? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have to literally apply, but you ultimately get accepted. I can't imagine that you wouldn't. I don't know if I'm not allowed to say that right now. A minimum but. grade in the introductory okay. course from the other school, and if you get that, it's usually B. Um, and most of the folks who do pursue that usually go for that. And uh, yeah, it's just some paperwork and yeah, two degrees. Yeah, and it does have to be by a certain date because it's not truly feasible for you to complete both degrees if you're only entering the second school your junior or even senior year. So you have to decide that relatively early on. We have another question right there, ma'am. And we will have time for about two more after this one, folks, and then uh, we'll need to break. When you all talk about the internships, when are those internships going on? Is it the summer? Is it during breaks? How can you be doing an internship if you're a full-time student? So I'm curious. I'll start with that one. Um, I did internships during the summer, during the school year, during breaks. I did them kind of all throughout. Um, my uh, summer between my sophomore and my junior, no, between my freshman and my sophomore year, I studied abroad in Australia. And the program there also has an internship component. So part of your class credit is internships. Um, then my sophomore year, I did about 15 hours a week at another internship within, in the city of Boston. And then the following year, I studied abroad again in London, same type of program where you get credit for your internship, and then um, both summers as well, I was interning. So I think it's just kind of balancing where it works with your schedule, how it works with your course load, um, things like that. But the internships are really, I think, very important in kind of driving where you think your career might go, because at least for me, it really helped point me in the direction that I, want, that I felt like I might be interested in a career. Um, I was really interested in the hospitality industry when I first came in, and it turned out that 
I'm now working in finance, which I never thought would happen, and that's because of my internships. I did some hospitality internships and decided that it wasn't quite for me. Um, and then I did a finance internship and really liked it, so. I would say majority of um, internships happen in the summer. That's, I would say, when most people do them. When we were, or when I was in college, which was only a few years ago, but still, um, I would say most people got their internships, you know, um, junior going to senior year. Now, I know it's starting your freshman going to sophomore year, or sometimes even out of high school. Um, but the thing is interacting with people because, you know, one of the big things about internships is helping you understand what you don't want to do. Sometimes it's not about, you know, what you think you want to go into, but what you, you can filter out what you don't want to do. So, Again, a majority of it, I would say, starts in the summer. You, you know, you'll apply in the spring and get something in the summer. And then a lot of people will continue working maybe where they were working before for the summer, but part time. So you do those 10 to 15 hours per week. Um, but yeah. Great. OK, we do have time for one fast, one more question right here, gentlemen, right there. And then I'm sure we'll be able to answer your questions also afterwards at the different panels and we're walking up to lunch. But sir, the last question. Um, Boston is a great town with lots of very highly rated universities, including, of course, Boston University. I guess my question is, is twofold. One, what does that do in terms of your ability to make your contacts and, and the business impact of the companies looking? Does that help or hurt you because of the competition? And two, how does that affect uh, life, uh, student life? Is there a lot of interaction across all these schools, or are they too competitive or? <laughs> In hockey, yes. <laughs> Anyone, yeah? Um, in terms of job searching, I think um, I would, I never felt like I was kind of set back by the fact that there are, uh, you know, other universities here in Boston across the river. Uh, I think Phil Career, again, does a great job. Um, the classes prepare you for the team environment and the public speaking and, uh, you know, the interv interviews. Um, I generally felt very prepared for my internships all the time. Um, as far as interactions with other students, it's really, I think, up to the student. If, um, if, if you want to um, meet other students from Harvard or MIT or anything else, there are plenty of conferences going on in the Boston area all the time, um, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not mandatory as a part of a program or anything, of course. I think to add on to that, that one of the great benefits of go, b being a student in Boston is that it's a fifth, the city is a fifth student. So that's a huge population of people between 18 and 22 or 23, whatever the age might be, that you're able to network with and become friends with and think of the possibilities that that leads to later in life. So I think that you're being in a city that's so highly populated with students and people that are your age is a really be great benefit of of Boston. You know, we, we do have events around career sometimes where schools will combine and just the other night we had a, an alum who who is an expert on personal branding and we had people from MIT across the river come over and, and attend the seminar as well and so and we're invited over there at times and other places so there is there is a competition but there is a cooperation too. So folks, we are just about out of time. I want to thank the panelists and Dean French for being here today. Thank you all. And I hope you learned a little bit more about how our students grow and develop as um, to be getting into their lives after college. So please take a fast break. We'll have our next session starting up in about five minutes. Thank you. <laughs>